Hey everyone, it's Deja from CrochetEverAfter.com. Today I'm doing a viewer request video. Um, the um, crocheter wanted to know how to crochet in a tube. So basically having an open ring that you're going to crochet into. So I'm going to show you how to chain and join it to form the ring. And then the two most important things that you want to remember when you're crocheting this way with the open ring so that your project comes out correctly. So I'm going to show you that right now and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to start working in a tube is put a slip knot on our hook. So depending on your instructions, it's going to tell you to crochet or crochet chain a certain number of chains. So we're just going to do, I'm going to say about 12. So it's not too big, not too small, so we can do it all together. So we have 5, 6, 7, 8. 10, 11, and 12. Okay, so then it's going to tell you to join your ring with a slip stitch to make a round. So when you do this, when it's a short string, it's very easy to see how to join it, where to join it, so that it doesn't get twisted. But the longer that your chain is, I'm actually going to make this a little bit longer just to illustrate this, and then I'll shorten it to actually do the tube so you can see so it'll go faster but once you get kind of long on your chain depending on how much it's going to be so if it's maybe the crown for a beanie it could get up to like 100 stitches so what you have to do when you go to join this is make sure that your chain is straight that it's all facing one way all the v's are on one side and that you don't twist it so you can't just start joining without paying attention because if you get a twist in it your project is not going to come out correctly so when i go to join for a tube or anything where i need to join a long chain together so like a cowl works also i spread out my fingers i just go along so that i keep all my the front of my chain in the same spot and then i take my two fingers and i bring them together so I make sure that the chains are on the outside I kind of use my middle finger to push them down and bring the two together so my tail is always in my way when I do this it's always on top so I just flip it over to the bottom and then I'm able to join my chain without getting a twist so I'm going to insert my hook into any part of that very first chain it's kind of tight because I made it very tight at the beginning and then you should be good. It's not going to twist on you once you insert your hook. So pull your loop through. I'm caught on a strand here somewhere. Let me do that over. This yarn has very loose plies. Where is that chain? Oh, there we go. So insert my hook, pull through. So this is a problem with loose ply yarn if you're a beginner. So don't feel bad. Everybody gets stuck on it. So then I pull my loop through the loop on my hook for the full slip stitch. And then I'm going to check it again. I'm going to make sure that if I go around, I see just V's. So without pulling on it. Or even if you do pull on it, because it'll just turn the twist all the way to the end. So you can see I have V's all the way around. So that means that my tube is um, not twisted and then I can begin the instructions so now depending on what your pattern is going to call for you might work in a spiral or you might join your rounds and depending on what stitch you're going to use you will have a certain amount of chains so we'll do a double crochet so what we'll do is we'll count the chain three as the beginning of our rounds so we'll do three chains and we'll work in the round where we're going to join our, our loop at the end. So depending on how many chains you make, when you slip stitch, it's going to count as that very first stitch. That chain three, take the slip stitch takes the place of your very first stitch. The chain three is as your first stitch. And then you start double crocheting. So you can see how my slip stitch got this chain here. And then I have a chain right next to it. So I'm going to double crochet there. and in each stitch around. So I'm just grabbing the back loop of these. 
you might they might tell you to use the bottom bump which is this spot here on the back side of your chain this little bump that comes across but for ease I usually do the back stitch back slip back back loop of my stitch so let me get around here because I said I was going to shorten this but I didn't so let me do these double crochets real quick and then I'll come back and show you when we join the round how it looks okay I finished all the double crochets except for one so the most important part of working this tube is to well, there's two important things one is make sure that your loop is not twisted before you join and the second thing is make sure you have the right stitch count so when you do that slip stitch that's going to take the place of your very first chain so that slip stitch becomes kind of the top loop that we have here of that chain and it counts as one of the stitches so depending on what stitch you're doing if you're doing a single crochet you'll probably chain one and single crochet right back into that stitch or if you're doing something where the chains count, like a double crochet, you'll have the chain three that comes out of that first stitch, and then you're continuing around. So a good thing to do on this first round is to count your stitches before you go on to the next round. Make sure that you didn't lose one because of that slip stitch. Sometimes it gets a little confusing and you think that it's one less stitch than you should have. So hopefully your pattern tells you how many stitches you're supposed to have at the end of the round, but usually it's the same amount of chains that you began with. So if it said chain 12, at the end of this first round, you should have 12 stitches. This one would be including the chain three. So I would have 11 double crochets and one chain three. So it's important to count those because if you have to do any kind of stitch pattern, so if my next round was shells or I had to skip stitches, I need the correct stitch count so that my pattern is correct. So that's basically what you're gonna do to work in a tube. So the next round, if it was just double crochets again, you can see that chain three is coming right off of that chain three because we slip stitched. So let me show you that real quick because I don't think I said it. So at the end of the round, you would slip stitch into the chain three. So I'm just going in the top of the chain three, slip stitching, and you can see how that slip stitch kind of becomes the top of this stitch. So it looks like a V. If I do it nice and loosely, it just sits right on top. So then I would chain three for the next round and it's gonna create a straight seam of, of uh, chain threes. And then I start double crocheting again. So if I just did this, I would create a completely straight tube if I kept all my stitches straight. But if you're working like a beanie, you're gonna have to decrease eventually. So you would follow the pattern and make sure you have the correct number of stitches so that your decreases are correct. So keep your loop straight and then count your stitches after that first round and make sure that you have the correct amount. But that's about it for working in a tube. Just change your stitch for whatever stitch it calls for. If you have any questions, leave them below. And thank you for watching.